Save the bees. Oh, I shouldn't yell. Should I yell? You can yell. It's all good. There are so many bees on this hive. One in three bites of food we eat, we owe to the pollination work of bees. But due to threats like habitat loss, chemical pesticides, and disease, global bee populations are in decline. However, not all hope is lost, and cities can play a part in bringing back the bees. So I want to know. Can urban beekeeping save the bees? To find out, I'm gonna visit the Best Bees rooftop apiary here in New York. We've got all of this empty rooftop space, so we've gotta be smarter about this. Then, I'll connect with Detroit Hives, a nonprofit that has used beekeeping to revitalize their neighborhood. And it's about giving back to your community, but also challenging yourself to learn something new, learning about pollinators. And finally, I'll see how Best Bees processes their honey. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. We've come to the top of a lower Manhattan apartment building where Best Bees runs beehives for their customers. How long have you been beekeeping for? I've been beekeeping for about 15 years now and I love it. I think it's kind of like maybe the eye of a hurricane in yeah. the middle of a storm. It's just peaceful. How do you feel? I feel great. Awesome. I feel very safe and I, I can't wait to check out the bees. Let's do this. All right, let's do it. Noah Wilson-Rich has his PhD in honeybee behavior immunology and was inspired to start Best Bees 10 years ago. Bees started dying in mass and the New York Times was covering it and the bees were vanishing. So I started a Facebook page, called it Best Bees. I said, we're installing beehives and I'll volunteer my time to manage them in exchange for research funding. 10 years later, we're the biggest beekeeping service in the country. We've created over 200 jobs for beekeepers. We've got a thousand beehives on rooftops like this. Office buildings and apartment complexes across 13 cities have opened their roofs to Best Bees, which then processes the honey and gives it to tenants for free. Noah is motivated by the research the hives provide. This is one species of 200,000 species of pollinators. We can't possibly study all of those pollinators, so we use bees as an indicator species. We think if we do what's good for honeybees, that will also help the other pollinators too. If you do one thing, like have a green rooftop or you have a garden, that's really gonna help pollinators and that'll bring us food all around the world. My assumption would be that the bees wouldn't like the city, but, that, but it sounds like I'm really wrong. So we're seeing the data, bees are dying everywhere, but they're doing better in cities. They make more honey in cities and they tend to live longer as a beehive. So far, our research has found that there are more flowers in cities. More flower diversity can mean better nutrition for bees versus in farmland where there's only one crop growing on farms these days. That's like if we ate pizza every day, our nutrition would take a hit. So my rooftop flowers and my deck actually are helping bees and like these ones could be coming and pollinating? Absolutely, and this is such a beautiful story because people of any age, any ability can go out and plant flowers. So let's open this up. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna give you the hive tool. Okay. So just shim this right in between here. Oh, awesome. shoot. Am I gonna agitate them? No, so within each box here, we have 10 frames. And the frames are hanging down. And this is what the bees build their honeycomb on. They live in this hive? Yeah, year round. How many? It can be maybe 10 to 30,000 bees in the what? spring. And wow. then get up to maybe 80,000 bees in the summer. So they're taking the nectar and then putting it in here? So this is all honey once it's capped. This beeswax on the top is cosmetics grade. So you can make lip balms or face lotions or candles or anything wow. with this stuff. And then the bees here, they just fill this up with honey. Check this out. Whoa. You can eat it warm out of the beehive. Honey is the only food that doesn't spoil. You can eat it fresh. You don't need a food permit. And these bees are such great team workers that look, from that little indentation I made, they're already repairing that damage to their, to their nest. Can I challenge you to hold this? Sure, I can so hold it. Two hands, each of the bunny ears there. So when we do beehives on rooftops of apartment buildings, of offices, the tenants get all the honey. With Best Bees, we don't sell honey because we help people make their own. But it's not just New York getting in the bee game. In Detroit, partners Timothy Jackson and Nicole Lindsay have used beekeeping to revitalize their community. At the time, we had well over 90,000 vacant lots and were causing some problems in our community around blight. So, you know, Nicole and I figured we could do something to give back. You know, after all, the vacant lots were going for just as little as $100. They were drawn to bees for the health benefits of local honey, which helped cure Timothy of a cold. Since 2016, they've made bees their life revitalizing four lots in Detroit. You know, we pitched this idea to the local crowdfunding campaign. We won 
And now with that $1,600, we had enough money to buy that property, to take courses, to purchase our first fees, to create community events sent around that project and to sustain it for that year. It sounds like it's an educational tool for people to really learn about bees. If you're living in the city, you might not even know what they are. You might be afraid of them. That's exactly how we started. You know, you know, Nicole was never an outside person. And I for sure was an outside person. I'm always inside. I'm a creative. So, you know, we always had a fear of what we thought were bees, which was actually wasps. Once we became educated, certified beekeepers, that fear transformed into love. love. And these vacant lots are filled with so many weeds. Most people think weeds are a bad thing, but here at Detroit House, we believe weeds is is the bees needs. What we mean by that is that these weeds are actually wildflowers, native wildflowers. So it's really important for communities that have local food sources. The same thing as our honeybee colonies. They are too in, in need of local food sources as well. Yeah, and let's not forget our native bees as well because our native bees don't fly as far. And so they need those sources very extremely local to them. But what's one small step that people can take to protect the bees? So bees get thirsty while they're out foraging for nectar and pollen. And so we tell people, hey, you can sit out either a frisbee, a shallow bowl, place rocks or pebbles or marbles in there because they are great flyers, but they're not great swimmers. And so you need those little pebbles or rocks for them to land on so they can have a drink of water. And that's something that everybody can do and that they can place near their garden. So what's so special about the honey? find out, we've come to Queens, where Best Bees processes theirs. There you go. Awesome. Oh my god. Wow, look this at the is color. Dark. Yeah, so, so. This is fall? Exactly. So we know from the Northeast that dark honey is fall honey. Look how dark this is. It oh. might look kind of gross, but it's not at all. <laughs> right? So bring it over here and what I'm going to show <laughs> it you. It might look kind of gross, but it's right? not at all. It's almost alien-like, you it know? Is, it is kind of freaky looking. I mean, this is food from insects, you know? It's yeah. like, it's weird, <laughs> but it's magical and it's healthy. So let's take this one. This frame, it's really dark here. We know that the wax that's on top, that's the cosmetics grade. That's right. the good stuff. So this is called an uncapping tool. Okay. So all you do with this is you just try to take the top layer of beeswax off. So all we're gonna do is just kinda, again, no wrong way to do it, and we'll scrape that honey into here. The, the, the top, wax. the wax, exactly. We'll, we'll scrape the top level of wax. Hard. And, you know, it just requires some good muscles. We just try to get that top layer off. You try to skim the top. Oh, I think I'm going, am I going too deep? You're good, you're good. Perfect. Oh, it's it's oh. super forgiving because the bees will actually just repair it all. Wow. You can put this back in the beehive. I've heard that there's medicinal values to honey. What is there any truth to that? What is totally. That? So we know that in addition to benefiting allergy sufferers with honey, it also helps with wound healing and it has antimicrobial properties to prevent infection and That's promote amazing. wound healing. For throat ailments, honey has actually been proven to be better than cough syrup. So why don't I hold this here okay. and then just load them in here. You see there's three slots. I can show you how if you oh. would like, but do I just do that? Could... Yep. Perfect. You're really making my feel me making me feel like I'm a natural beekeeper. You know, Lucy, you are a natural. <laughs> and what's really cool, it's not just you personally, but it's the human experience. Oh, so sorry this is for a getting it out here. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go. Go for it. Oh. So I'm spinning it and I can see all the honey is like getting flowing out of the of the spinning contraption and it's hitting the wall of this container. It's like getting sprayed, sort of like a salad spinner. I'm gonna try it. There you go, it yeah. It fast. Can I just drink it? Yeah. Oh, can I just drink? I was just gonna drink, I was just gonna just take a shot of it. Wow. So good. It's an elixir of life. It's so wild because this tastes so good, so rich so healthy for you. And you'd never think that like a city as crazy and dirty as your New York can taste this good. You'd think this would be from like a precious organic farm and it's from the city. It's so cool. And it's a new way to experience where you live. There are a lot of ways that you can help bees without becoming a beekeeper. So here's what you can do. First, plant native plants so that bees have more flowers to pollinate. Second, stop using pesticides because they harm bees and are a known carcinogen to humans. And third, buy locally sourced honey. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. You guys need to try this. You guys are gonna try some, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It is. 
Oh my god, okay. It's like still warm from the beehive. The news can be a lot. There's a lot of good out there and a lot of fearless kids and families putting kindness into action in their own communities. But the first step towards helping is understanding and that's where we come in. Everyone wants to understand the world, which is why we're bringing the news to your family the Now This Way. Each week we'll talk about the important issues, the positive progress, and the unsung heroes who are changing things for the better. With the weekly YouTube series, podcast, and newsletter, we'll explore the uplifting stories that inspire us and dive deep to understand our changing world together. On Now This Kids.